after film screen right is that the end of the story we want to see how the image formation happens right so we talked up the instrumentation we came until what uh, we call the film screen blurring now is there anything else that we need to consider or is this fine are we good to go to talk about the image quality do we have the image yet yeah it may seem that oh we are almost there but we still have not talked about the last bit of the instrumentation and that has to do with this film see we talked about film screen the intensifying screen so that you can convert the x rays to light photons and that light photon spoils the film and then what does uh, the physician use he takes this film develops it and then he looks at you know in front of a, a light box right you would have seen white light will be there and he will hold this uh, developed film in front of it and then interpret whether you have a uh, you know simple case that you would have encountered is whether there is a fracture or not right so we are almost there but we still have to talk about the film because in the end the doctor is not interpreting what is there in the film screen right i mean it's still not this one somewhere this information of light photon is getting onto the film that you can think of it as the last subsystem right i mean the last subsystem before the physician looks at it and makes a interpretation okay so that means we need to talk about the film characteristics so just uh, you know what what is the process right what is the process what do you think a uh, film characteristics that we need to worry about oh first and foremost is because we have done even the previous uh, module right when we talked about film screen we were always interested in some resolution that is lost the point spread function so we have been consciously using the point spread function and the linearity to build our case right update our imaging equations but now the question is okay do we have to worry about when what do we mean by film characteristics yeah one of the characteristics is you have the film screen the film screen right the intensifying screen creates light photon and the light photon goes and hits so we just concluded how the thickness has a effect on the resolution so we modeled it as a point spread function of the screen so in principle if we are really you know really wanting the details we could say the film right what point forms on the film right if one photon one point falls on the film when you develop it the process of developing and then you take it out and look at it in the develop how much the point spread is happening that could be used but it turns out it turns out that is not a limiting factor as we saw when we have multiple subsystems each with uh, its own resolution it's the poorest guy that is determinant right so here it turns out that the film characteristic for resolution it has a much uh, superior capability to localize than your film screen right the intensifying screen that we saw and therefore in relation to that this is not going to be a limitation and therefore usually uh, your your film characteristic the resolution aspect of it is not much worried about or analyzed but in principle you could if you have for whatever reason you you have a you know requirement then you could just model it as a Uh, point spread function and convolve with our imaging equations that we have already no no problem but what is more important it turns out is look at the process this is the image like right? the film is going to be developed and the doctor is going to make a diagnosis based on that so the image quality the image interpretation right the f of x comma y that is input the input unknown there is a inherent contrast right how does that get captured in this image that the doctor is viewing so what is this image what is the units sorry what do you see when you see black and white and gray what is that is that the x ray photons because your unknown distribution is your attenuation coefficient for x ray photons right so is that what it is or if not what is the characteristics that we need to worry about 
So, it turns out we are not interested in resolution per se of the film because that is superior. But how does it transform? So, look at the process, you have X-ray photons go into the body, right? X-ray photons interact with the body, it comes out through the other side, through transmission and then it falls on the detector. So, you have a line of X-ray photon, come along a line, pass through the material, come hit the detector at one location, right? So, now when it hits the detector, oh, we have we are going to talk about this uh, intensifying screen, right? So, it gets into that. So, the X-ray photon gets converted. So, that means it has to interact with the material, converts to light photon. Now, this light photon hits the film, right? The film that you have. So, what is the film doing? On one side, you have the light photon, right? The X-ray getting converted to light photons and the light photons darken, right, darken the uh, film. On the outside, you develop the, after that you take the film, you develop and the outside is the film that the doctor is taking, keep it in under, keeping under a white light and um, making the interpretation, right. So, that means, we need to be very careful. So, the when we characterize this film, we should characterize its ability to transform the input to the output. Because the input has all the physics that we talked about. The inherent contrast of the f of x comma y is captured in the input side on what falls on the detector. But what comes out of the detector that is displayed to the doctor, right? That we need to, this transformation is happening in the film. So, we need to talk about, understand the characteristics of this film in terms of how it is able to transform the input to the output. So, so, the idea is the film darkening after development depends on the incident light, right? So, incident light, so just to contextualize, say if you had along the path, you had a bone and another soft tissue, you know when you go for a bone fracture, I am sure you would have uh, had a chance to look at at least somebody's x-ray with a bone fracture, you will see the bone is not going to be dark, the bone is going to be white, right, at least on the brighter side. So, what is happening? Oh, we know bone is more attenuating. So, when, when, when the x-ray photons go through the bone, if there is bone along the path, x-ray photons will get attenuated. So, less number of photons will come in its shadow, right. So, that means that X-ray photon is less, that is going to spoil only less. So, that means it is going to, when, when I say spoil, this X-ray photon gets converted to light photon and that light photon darkens the film. So, this darkening is proportional to the number of photons that are coming in. This number of photons that are coming in X-ray range, uh, I mean uh, coming in light photons that are darkening this is proportional to the X-ray photon number of X-ray photons that are coming, which is proportional to or which is determined by your material property that was attenuating it along the path. So, in some sense, the film darkening is proportional, right? it depends on the incident light in the screen. That incident light is dependent on the incident X-ray, right? that is where we talked about this conversion efficiency of your uh, um, phosphor active material, all those things. So, this is the idea. So, the input side is the physics the X-ray photon that is coming through the body which captures the material property. The output is the a film darkening. So, this film darkening, you know, is interpreted, the doctor takes the, the developed film, right, the darkened film, keeps it in front of a white box. If you, if you, I mean, we, you have been, you probably saw people take in light they have and then look at it. But usually, formally what is done is, you have a light box which will be homogeneously white. They will keep the x-ray film, right, in front of that, clip it and then you can see the, the uh, x-ray, read the x-ray, okay, x-ray image, which will appear grey, shades of grey. So, essentially what we are interested in is, the x-ray that is interpreted, the output image is nothing but is optical density. Density will be more or less 
depending on the amount of darkening which will be dependent on the amount of incident light which depends on the incident x-ray. So, if you have more attenuation in the material, you will have less photons incident x-ray that when it gets converted, you will have less darkening and that if you uh, look at the opt so optical density, right? So, you will have more, uh, it will appear more white. So, formally it is defined as D is equal to logarithmic base 10 of I i by I t. What is this I i and I t? Okay, I is irradiance. So, wh what are we talking about? We are talking about the x-ray film which is developed, right? This is darkened. So, they keep it in front of the white box. So, light goes through, the film is there and the human observer is on the other side. So, back of the film there is white light which is trying to eliminate all the region with the same white. Whereas, there is a screen that is a film that is blocking and then the reader or the radiologist is on the other side interpreting it. So, the light has to go through the x-ray film. This x-ray film is nothing but developed which has a darkened, the amount of darkening depends on its exposure, right. So, you have irradiance on the input side, what comes on the output? So, what is transmitted? So, irradiance on the input side, irradiance on the transmit, what is coming in, what is coming out. So, that means if you have transparency, transmittivity, so this I i by I t, right, is called opacity because I t by I i is your transmittivity, how much of it is transmitted. So, if I have light coming this side, white light, right, on the input side, if this is a dark, right, the outside you will have less signal, right, it will appear grey but it will be dark, black, grey. Whereas, if I have transparent part, the light will come here, everything will come out, right. So, you will have your transmittivity. So, I T by I I is your transmittivity. So, the inverse of that, the reverse of that, I, I by I T is your opacity. How much is blocked? How much is transmitted? How much is blocked? Whichever way you can write it. So, definition of optical density is, it is a log natural 10 of your opacity clear. So, now you see the point. So, we are actually ending up interpreting the optical density, but that optical density is related to the, the distribution of the x-ray that is coming in which is distributed through or correlated with the distribution of your attenuation coefficient, clear. So, I, I hope you are able to see through the the instrumentation, the physics, all of them are culminating here. So, the image that you are seeing, the each pixel that you are seeing, whether it is a black color or a gray color or a white color, I think you should be able to connect it to the underlying signal chain that we just saw, both from physics, instrumentation, right. So, so much for optical density, this is what we do. So, naturally, what is the range? Ideally, you want to have a good range. You want to see the darkest portion as well as the brightest portion in the same thing. So, you, you can distinguish. See, the whole idea for us is contrast. Whether there is a fracture or not, because if their bone is continuously white, it is one piece. If there is a small crack, then there is probably a different material, air or uh, you know, uh, liquid. And so, the uh, the darkening will be different at that location. So, can we tease out this white from dark or grey? So, it is always a contrast that we are looking for, right? So, in this paradigm, if you look at it, typically you get a range 0.25 to 2.25. This is the range of distribution that you can get in your optical density. However, in the paradigm that we discussed, the doctor is looking. So, it's, you are then stuck up with your visual human visual perception, how much can I, how much of the shades of grey can I actually distinguish, how, how, how much of uh, shades that I am comfortable, that my eyes are normal human 
physiology, I physiology, right. So, it turns out 1 to 1 1.5 is very comfortable range, okay. So, this is your optical density range that is comfortable for human observer or the desired range where you like to have, okay. So, so much for optical density and the interpretation of that, but uh, to think about it, is this uh, sufficient, I mean are we good to go, right? Is there anything else that is missing? Ah, probably what we did not cover yet is find, the, we know the output now, we know how to interpret the output. But then you said on the input side you have the X-ray photons or the exposure, so this, this film, right, the characteristic, the film that we are talking about, in some sense it is exposed on one side, that exposure leads to darkening, so the output is after you develop it, the uh, you can characterize the output or measure the optical density. But can we now have some relation, because we have to talk about this film. We know how to read the film, but then what is a good, I have a film A from manufacturer A, I have a film B from manufacturer B or same film, I have different specs from the same manufacturer. How do I, how do I assess the performance of this film? Do I have a way to measure its performance, right? Or what is its influence on the output image when this, this the transformation? And therefore, that will allow us to use that as a metric to use appropriate film for the purpose. So, what do we need? We need some handle on to connect the exposure and the output image optical density. On the input side is the exposure, the output side is the optical density. So, we will have to characterize this film ability to map one to the other, right. So, we need to talk about how does the film perform in the in, in this, how much of exposure yields how much of optical density, right. So, that conversion, that is a factor that we need to study. So, typically that is uh, done using what is called as HND curve, what you see here is an example of a HND curve. In fact, uh, Qualitatively, I think you may uh, know some of this, right, I mean in a different context, if you take a photography, I know we are all into digital photography, just take it, but at least those uh, amateur photographers, right, at least when we uh, a decade ago or a couple of decades ago, we used to have uh, this uh, craze, okay can I go do SLR, can I, what are the functions, uh, parameters that I can control, right. Uh, a difference between a amateur photographer and we taking a mobile is they go and try to optimize how much of exposure should I give, can I go slow, can I capture the contrast. So, they, they try to understand that in the context of the uh, uh, film, right. So, some will do very good with the Kodak uh, film, some will take their photo to capture the best for Konica, right. So, they, they have different vendors. So, each film has a different characteristic of how much exposure to how much output contrast it can capture. So, similar thing here also inside is one in, input is one side is exposure, the output is optical density. So, similar concept is applicable here also and therefore, you have this HND curve which can be analyzed to study the uh, characteristics of this film. So, your exposure on one side, optical density on other side, what you see are, you can look at it, these are called a characteristic S curve, why? Because it looks like S, okay. Why is this characteristic S curve? So, the film, if you do this, this is the, this is a characteristic of that film. So, what is that you are seeing? Oh, you are seeing some first things first, you have some non-zero optical density even when you have very minimal exposure, in fact, this is asymptotic. So, that means even without exposure, you already have some optical density, some background level intensities, 
which is what why it is called as fog level okay so you have fog level which kind of forms the floor the lowest value even though it is so it's a non zero value even when you don't have any exposure so that is always going to be there so if you want to build on a signal it has to be on top of it so that is your fog level we'll come to that then what do you see or oh, then you see a region here right region here where it starts out so for low exposure you have low optical density then you have another region where for high exposure you have flattening of your optical density there is no more change in your optical density for any change or any increase in your exposure then you have a, a region that is an interesting region that we'll talk about where it is supposedly linear right this whole region where the relationship between your exposure and optical density appears to be linear that is i can increase the optical density by increasing the exposure okay so we'll we'll formally solve this so if i have to understand this characteristics then i have used qualitatively three regions that i have to uh, spoke about so maybe we can formally define how to capture that that we will do in the subsequent slide but uh, the other thing so you have a toe right the low exposure low optical density region the shoulder which is the high exposure high optical density region and the region between your toe and shoulder where there is a portion which is linear okay um then you have three of these curves here okay the first curve if you look at it is called as high speed film with caw ah, this is familiar right this is the one that we are talking about right having the intensifying screen calcium tungstate remember so this is your high speed film and uh, recall i mentioned something about high speed what what means by high speed we'll again touch about that in the, in the next slide but this should trigger you to our discussion on the intensifying screen okay so so this is the performance this is a direct x ray so when you have film that is exposed to direct x ray so this will be the characteristic performance and here you have another optical film which has a high speed but it doesn't have any intensifying screen so we'll talk about so all of them have the same characteristics but you notice that each one is shifted each one is different you you see that each one is shifted with the exposure right and each one spans a different range each one is linear over a different range the slope of this linear range is also different so what do we mean? so we will we'll capture all this and discuss but what do you desire oh you you need to have a good optical density right in the range that is desired you have to have a optical density for minimal exposure right so based on that you could already look at it and say look in order to get the same optical density say for example here i have to have more exposure for your high speed optical film without screens right so now it's not just question of photography or anything now it's biomedical imaging exposure is a important aspect so i would like to have minimum exposure and maximum output contrast so clearly you can see why screen film screen is helpful and for the same reason you can see why your direct x ray right yes it is better than your pure optical thing but then notice that this is very steep right this is very steep that means i have a very small range of exposure where i can operate this right that's what it means if it is steep the slope is steep means i have a very small region of exposure where i can fine tune and increase the optical density after that it will saturate so it will so you see these important characteristics let us shifting left right which has an effect on your for a given optical density which has an effect on exposure and the gradient or the slope right you want it to go tall so that you have enough contrast 
but at the same time you want it to go tall slowly so that you can have more control that will be the desired feature right so let's capture these in the subsequent slide so we are going to use this uh, uh, slide interpret this slide in the subsequent lecture or uh, subsequent uh, uh, um, slides without having the figure so make sure that you kind of get a big picture of what we are going to talk about we are going to talk about this linear region we are going to talk about fog level we are going to have effect on speed right and of course your extent linear over how much range that is also important okay so what we saw is x-ray exposure yields optical density right so we need to connect these two and the curve that we saw h and d essentially connects the exposure to your optical density so now uh, sorry um, right so what we need to do is well the s curve is a non linear curve right so you but we are interested in this connection where we can model and make use of it so i can increase the exposure i can increase the uh, density so yeah, where can i model because the the plateau the shoulder and the toe are of you know kind of limiting conditions i can only operate in between so i can model the linear range with the d is equal to this guy which is gamma log 10 exposure by exposure at zero what is this that means uh, this is essentially saying what is the exposure when i, I mean what is the uh, optical density right when i have zero exposure or rather sorry zero optical density what is my exposure exposure at zero optical density so this is your exposure so all this is fine so it's again logarithmic what is this oh so this is your gamma very similar remember i said h and d curve film in optical photography you would have talked about this s curve or gamma curve the same gamma is essentially the characteristic so that that encompasses that that is dependent on all the other aspects right you have to develop the film that there is a temperature in which you develop the optic the, the dark room the ambient temperature of the dark room the chemicals that you use their ph all those things right there is so many factors in developing the film so all of that put together has an effect on the material that you are using all of that put together has a effect on moving this curve right modeling this what you see as the s curve that we saw the characteristic changes and the characteristic changes due to all possible process are captured in your gamma okay so that is your uh, film what they call as film gamma so what do you want the film gamma to be or oh, this models the linear range right so ideally you want how do you want oh you want so that the curve you have more region over which you can operate and it has to tall it has to have a good uh, dynamic range okay so typically your gamma you know uh, is operated in the region of 0.5 to 3 so this is your kind of your slope right so how rapid so that you you saw some of the uh, you saw three curves right you see the slope that was changing so typically the slope is varying in this fashion so your gamma is uh, operational between 0.5 to 3 so how do we capture that gamma curve two metrics one is just recall so what was the thing ah one is the um one is the exposure range right over which exposure range over which exposure is in which direction x axis so we call as latitude so the range over which it is linear the range of values in x axis which is your exposure where the function is linear right you want latitude to be 
more right you want more region where you can tune this and then is your speed so what do we know from speed right we know speed has to do with ah you have light photons coming the light photons hit the film right in the intensifying screen x ray photons get converted to light photons light photons go darken the film so how far, so more the light photons quicker the darkening right so speed in some sense had to do with the efficiency of conversion right conversion efficiency of the material okay so here what do we want we want to measure the speed when we talk about we talk about uh, in in our case here we are talking about the optical there is a fog right so that speed uh, the effect of that right the conversion efficiency can be captured here using the because exposure to output right that is what we are talking about so it can be captured using d equal to 1 plus fog like fog level so we can inverse of the exposure at which your optical density is equal to 1 plus fog level okay so in the previous curve right the previous s curve for three different things you saw a, a fog line which i highlighted and then there was another dashed line which was your 1 plus fog level so the optical density right optical density d is equal to 1 plus fog level at here is the inverse of the exposure at which this happens okay so clear so the effect of uh, speed you already saw what is the effect of speed oh you had this tungsten can sheet screen that had lower exposure but good optical density when the speed was poor or slower then you actually moved but in fact speed without right the regular optical film which was otherwise high speed without intensifying screen that was also required more exposure because you, it's not converting so you have to give more exposure to give more photons so these are two important uh, parameters when you uh, select a film for the purpose clear so i think uh, with that with that we essentially cover we have completed covering the instrumentation and image formation what we are left with now is talking about image quality the last part in fact when we talk when we when we cover the image quality now there shouldn't be any material that is new the only thing that because we already had a introduction of the the image quality and you know what we go after without specific city to any modality even though we did use some examples from x ray the idea was the concepts and the rationale behind what is image quality and the metrics to capture image quality was already introduced now we have completed instrumentation image formation so now the job for us is to contextualize these image quality metrics to the instrumentation and image formation that we have covered so in principle there shouldn't be any new concept or any new uh, aspect that we we'll go we are going to uh, introduce we are just going to start with all the metrics that we talked about right what are the metrics we talked about oh noise signal contrast resolution we in some sense we have already covered and we we saw the mtf right so resolution and contrast go together so so we have to all the terminologies we have covered so now what we will do is we'll re write those terminologies and expand them in the context of this particular physics and instrumentation okay